Hello and welcome to All Things Marvelous. I'm John Paul and today we are going to be making this in Blender. I wanted to make something quick, something easy, something for the beginners, something that you can just get straight into um, and should have something up and running really, really quickly. So hopefully we're going to do this in less than five minutes. It might be a little bit more, but let's try. So let's get into it. So the first thing we are going to do is add a icosphere. So go mesh icosphere like that. And in the options of icosphere, we're going to add the, bring this up to five. If we zoom in there and go to wireframe mode and within wireframe and up here, we take off x-ray, should be able to see what's going on with the geometry. What I'd like you to do is go to the modifier. In the modifier tab, you have to click subdivision surface um, leave it on one and click apply this should give you this pattern like that that appears okay next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on a displace modifier and with this we're going to click new in the texture area and the little button at the side there we're going to click that and move it to clouds with cloud set we're going to say the size to two um, and that should give us a nice um, def deformation or displace with on the actual mesh next thing we're going to do is make this animated so um, if we click shift and a and click empty um, that will give us a plain axis empty and then we click grab which is G and Z to move it up above the geometry then what we're going to do is go back into the modifier on the icosphere and click instead of click local we're going to come in here and click um, object and from the object we're going to use the empty so we can go into the window and click like that so from the empty we need to go to frame one of the animation and in the information of the empty over here we're going to go to the rotation and click i which will give us a keyframe on the timeline next we're going to go to the end frame which is frame 250 we're going to grab x and y by clicking left mouse button and pulling down um, and then we're going to set that to 360 and as you should see the geometry does not move at all from that we're going to click i and that will give us another keyframe hopefully now you can see that that it gives us a nice animation which also does loop okay so next thing we're going to do is set up the camera if we click on the camera and click the front view of uh, the orthographic if you then select Control, Alt and Zero. That will hone in the camera to the viewport that you were looking at. Next thing we can do is come up here and you can choose anything you want from this. I had it on portrait last time. We're gonna change this to um, a square Instagram picture like that. Um, and then we're gonna come to the details tab while we're still on the camera and zoom in a little bit to give us a better view. Okay, so we've got a looping animation, we've got it in the camera. Next thing we need to do is we need to add a plane behind it. So if we go Shift A, Mesh, Plane, like that, and if we come into the side view, we should be able to go off or rotate and hold on to control, and that will allow us to move the plane um, like that. And then we should be able to grab and Y, we should be able to bring it behind. If we go to the camera view, we should be able to click S and scale it up so it fills our background. Next thing we want to do is put an environment texture in the world. So we've got a surface um, um, in the world tab over here and click color, we should be able to click environment texture and we'll use the one I always use, which is HDRI um, small studio. I'll add this in the um, description so you can get it as well. Next thing we want to do is add the shader. Um, oh sorry, while we're in the world tab, also if you've got a ray visibility, I'd really need you to turn off glossy um, so that it doesn't reflect on the geometry itself. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to shade these things. So if I get another window here, um, pull it up from the corner and change this to shader editor. While we're in the shader editor, I want to click the main geometry and click new and then click the um, panel behind it, the plane and click new as well. Um, on the geometry, what we're going to do is on the principal BSDF, let's make ourselves a bit more room. We are going to put the transmission up fully. We're then going to take this and copy it four times. So control and shift and D, sorry, shift and D and shift and D like that. Um, what we need to do is set this one to our vibrant pink, this one leave it at white, this one's going to be our turquoise blue like that and this is going to be a dark blue like that, bit of a royal blue. What we want to then want to do is we want to mix all of these together so we're going to add a mix shader. Um, we're going to add, um, it's shift A shader mix shader we need two of these so we'll duplicate that take that over there we also need an um, an add shader so go to shader add shader this is our final way of mixing them all together so if we take the pink um, and the white and then what we need to do is get a color ramp 
this color ramp should allow us to mix it um, in between the two colors um, with a bit of a gradient so um, I'm going to zoom in there and set that um, up like that and put the color into the factor um, next we want to take these two colors and we want to put them into the mix shader like that and we're going to use a gradient texture so we've got a texture gradient texture and if you have got node wrangler enabled all you need to do is put control T and that will should give you the coordinates to be able to map this um, gradient so the next thing we want to do is we want to get into the color ramp um, and we want to set this to B spline and we want to bring up um, that color like that and in the fat color color goes to the factor and that um, color into the factor as well the next thing we want to do is put these two things into the add shader like that and like that um, let's have a look how that is looking so we're nearly, nearly there some and then oh, sorry yeah that needs to pick the main shader like that um, so the next thing we do is the the background again this is going to be a gradient texture so we want to take um, this and what we wanted to do is add a we can press control T that will give us an image texture well, something we can do here as well if control control s um, which, which will change the actual texture and we're going to go texture and we're going to go gradient texture like that for this we're going to use a color ramp um, And we're going to do the actual colors within this ramp. So we're going to do the blue. Um, we're going to move that up, and we're going to do a nice turquoise like that, um, and a nice royal blue like that. Um, as you can already see, we're going to change this to diagonal, um, and we're going to move this round by about 90 degrees on the Z. Um, it should give us um, a nice. Um, color like that last couple of things to do we need to go back to the geometry of the icosphere and we need to bring the roughness up on both of the pink and the white like that and then we bring the roughness down on both of the blues like that then the last final finishing touches are to move the a um, ior on some of them we're going to change this one to 1.18 uh, 1.18 like that I'm um, gonna change this one on the light blue to 0.7 like that um, and that should give us a really nice looking animation okay that's it I hope you liked this tutorial if you can please like and subscribe that would be brilliant let me know if you'd like any more longer tutorials or anything or much quick ones like this um, that would be great all right cheers goodbye